A pyranometer is a professional scientific instrument used to measure the insulation or solar flux density or radiant energy in kilowatts per square meter or BTUs per square foot. The solar flux varies with cosine of the angle of incidence. When sunlight is perpendicular to the measuring device, the available sunlight energy is maximum. As the angle of incidence changes to 60 degrees, the maximum sunlight available drops to 50 percent. At an angle of incidence of 90 degrees, sunlight would be horizontal to the measuring device and the sunlight intensity available would be zero. In other words, a pyranometer has a directional response as well as an overall response to sunlight intensity. The diameter of our sun is about 865,000 miles and it contains more than 99 percent of the mass of our solar system. But most people don't care about the size of the sun or about how much it weighs. They want to know how much energy it delivers. On the moon, the sunlight energy that falls on a square meter is close to 1.4 kilowatts per hour. By the time sunlight is filtered through our atmosphere, the maximum energy available to a square meter per hour is reduced to one kilowatt per hour. A sky eye may be adjusted to give readings in terms of watts per square meter. It's October 18th, 2010, and we're in a Long Island backyard. And what we want to do today is uh, measure the intensity of sunlight. Uh, so it's three o'clock and the, the sun is on, it's starting to set. Uh, well, uh, here in this backyard it's starting to set because once it goes behind that tree, <laughs> we're not going to be getting much sunlight at all. But we have a little sunlight left so we can do our, our little test here uh, with the, uh, the sky eye. Of sunlight. And we can do this in a number of ways. This is a very simple method. This is a photoresistor and it changes resistance as the intensity of sunlight changes. So all we have to do is figure out a way to attach the leads of this photoresistor to a digital volt ohmmeter. And uh, we can do that by using uh, screen splines and slide this over the leads and then attach the, the tips of the, the probes to that. So these are screen splines. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. That's one. We'll just slide the other one over. Okay, so we have our screen splines on. Because we know that the so resistance bend drops these leads over. with light, but make a sky uh, we'd like to get something First that's thing we'll need is a photoresistor like this. And then we'll attach some wires to it. And then we're, we're going to in install this photoresistor inside a PVC cap for cosine correction of the sunlight. Oh, how do we attach it? Well, the first yeah. thing that uh, we're going to do is we're going to install a half-inch heater hose inside the PVC cap. And the next thing we want to do uh, would be to put some shrink sleeve on the cap to limit the amount of light that goes through it, uh, so that within a, a certain range. Now you'll notice there's still too much space here inside the PVC cap, so we have to fill that space with a spacer. So the next thing that we'll be doing is we're going to insert this photoresistor inside the spacer. Okay, hang on now. So here's our spacer, and so we'll install that inside the spacer like this. Now notice it's recessed. You can see how it's uh, recessed about a quarter of an inch or so. Alright, so now all we have to do is install our spacer inside the PVC cap like this, making it kind of simple, but uh, you notice it's still a little loose, so we're going to be adding some uh, some clear um, silicon caulking to this to make sure that it doesn't slide around so much. Okay, well that's the basic idea. Uh, okay, the, the half-inch heater hose, we're going to install this 
right inside our half inch PVC cap. Okay, so uh, it's going to be a little difficult. You might want to moisten it a little bit, but you press it in there really tight like this. And then, uh, after you get it in as tight as you possibly can. Okay, we've installed our heater hose in our inside our half inch PVC cap. Now we just want to cut this off flush with the, the PVC cap. There you go. That wasn't too hard now, is it? And there's a reason for that. It is. <laughs> That's why I expect you to come up with a better method. Anyway, uh, whatever you do, do something. Okay, so there we go. So we put a little shrink sleeving over the vinyl tube. And then you notice that it fits in there nice and snug. Okay, we have this like nice that. piece so now that slides off. right in here. But we still have to take up a little more space. So you'll notice that this uh, quarter inch um, polyethylene tube fits right inside here nicely. Got even more space. Okay, so we'll slide so that we'll, in. We'll slide this eighth inch polyethylene tube inside this also. Now at okay. this point you probably think we're ready off. to install our sky eye inside the mounting block, uh, but we're not quite ready. And not not just because it uh, fits a little loose, but also uh, because we we have a little too much area exposed for the light. To get a good cosine yeah, correction, we have uh, to use some of this. Is, uh, some shrink sleeving. So we have to shrink. We have to install some shrink sleeving over this. Okay, and we'll shrink it down and let some of it overlap. When all is said is done. You're going to still want to install your sky eye inside a mounting block like this. Okay, so we we'll feed the, the wire through for the sky eye. Push it in. But now we need to mount the eye. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to need a mounting block. Now I'm just going to use uh, two by threes. Uh, you could use whatever you like, but these seem to work pretty good. Uh, so the, the it's eye going to look something like in the this block like this, and the wires will come through the back, and then you'll use uh, the cap from a milk container to seal off the back. And this will be mounted on a uh, on a wall or a collector with a, a mounting screw like that. Okay, simple enough. Well, let's see if we can build one. So this is the uh, two by three. Now, remember to put this in a, a holding jig like this uh, before you start drilling. Otherwise, it's going to be bouncing all over the place. Okay? Uh, I like to make two at a time. So this, these are the pilot holes. We're going to be uh, drilling uh, larger holes right through the, this. So this, this is a good guide for a drill. Now, uh, I'm not giving you the actual distances from the holes, but these are some things that you can figure out uh, yourself, and uh, it will vary depending on your design. Okay, uh, so our pilot holes are all drilled. Uh, now, uh, the next thing that we need is the uh, a recessed uh, hole in the bottom, and this is, this is what will fit uh, our bottom cap. This is our um, milk container cap. Uh, so we need a, a, we need to recess this hole first. So we'll, this is uh, inch and three eighths. Okay, that's one. wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, now we have to drill a hole straight through, and this is going to be an inch and an eighth. All right, let's do that.
Okay. That's our basic holes. Now, I, I said we're going to make two of these, so the next thing we have to do is just going to cut this in half. Ready to go. Uh, the next thing we're going to need will be a hole that will connect the wires from our sky eye uh, to the outside world. So we're going to drill a hole right, right about there. So I just set this up. I'm just doing this by eye now. You can measure stuff. I'm going to put a little bevel on it. All right. Not entirely necessary, but it makes it a little cleaner. Uh, and the other thing we want to do is just uh, finish sanding it. Okay. You suck. 